Think about this. Researchers from the University of Essex have published a controversial study suggesting that men are the true victims of gender inequality, with women at an overall advantage. The paper, published in 2019, claims to have found that men are on average more disadvantaged than women in 91 out of 134 countries, which is about 68% of countries studied, and includes Great Britain, Canada, and the U.S., Okay, before you crucify me, this isn't the only place where this controversial idea has been called out. As the World Bank put it in its Global Gender Gap report, the current standard for measuring inequality is the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index. The index rewards countries that reach the point where outcomes for women are equal for those of men, but neither rewards or penalizes cases in which women outperform men. That means it's effectively a measure of women inequality and ignores male inequality, which is clearly only half the picture. This stuff is super interesting and very important. If advocates for women equality truly want to achieve it, they need to look at the full picture. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the ways that men are behind inequality. If you think these conversations are as fun as I do, hit those like and subscribe buttons. My name is Chris, and this is The Think Report. The purpose of this episode is not to say that men have it worse than women, although some measurements do illustrate that, like the basic index of gender inequality. The purpose of this episode is to uncover some of the ways that men aren't equal and to remind us that if we're going to say that we haven't reached equality for women, we need to be careful that we aren't saying that we've reached equality for men. Because that is certainly not true. Men make up 50% of the population, If women want to ask that men buy into the idea of equality, we need to ensure that we're looking at the full picture. Let's dive into some of the ways that men have inequality. According to the World Bank, average life expectancy for men in the U.S. is 77 years, while in the U.K. it's 81 and 82 in Canada. That little dip at the end near 2020 is the pandemic, by the way. If we split this into gender, we can look at some of the data by the CDC, which puts the life expectancy for females at 80 years and males at 75, for an average of 77 between the two sexes. Why is that, do you ask? Many reasons. COVID-19 seems to have affected men slightly more than women. But in addition, according to Harvard Health, men take bigger risks. Some of the reasons seem to be biological destiny. The frontal lobe of the brain, the part that controls judgment and consideration of consequences, develops more slowly in boys and young men than in their female counterparts. This may contribute to the fact that far more boys and men die in accidents due to violence than girls and women. Examples include biking, driving, and homicide. This tendency towards lack of judgment and consideration of consequences may also contribute to detrimental lifestyle decisions among young men, such as smoking or drinking to excess. Men also have more dangerous jobs. Men far outnumber women in some of the riskiest occupations, including military combat, firefighting, and working in construction sites. So to all the men out there, it's actually healthier for you if we achieve job equality for women. The more women in riskier jobs, the fewer men. Men are also more likely to die of heart disease more often and at a younger age. In fact, men are 50% more likely than women to die of heart disease. The fact that men have lower estrogen levels than women may be a part of the reason. But medical risks such as poorly treated high blood pressure or unfavorable cholesterol levels may contribute as well. On average, men are larger than women. Across many species, larger animals tend to die younger than smaller ones. Although the magnitude of this effect is uncertain in humans, it may work against male longevity. Men also commit suicide more often than women, but we'll touch on that a bit later. Men are less socially connected. For reasons that aren't entirely clear, people with fewer and weaker social connections, which tends to include men more often than women, tend to have higher death rates. If you've ever heard of the book Blue Zones by David Buettner, one of the things that centurions have in common is their social communities. So when women choose social careers like healthcare, teaching, and social work, There are actually healthy benefits to that. 
According to UNESCO, boys are increasingly left behind in education. They're at a greater risk of repeating grades, failing to progress and complete their education, and not learning while in school. Did you know that today more boys are currently out of school than girls? Girls have more difficulty to access education and are out of school in particular at primary level, but then it becomes a boy's problem. In many countries, boys are at greater risk of repeating grades, failing to progress or complete their education. The costs of boys' disengagement from education are enormous, and yet there are few programs and policies addressing this. While previously boys' disengagement and dropout were concerns mainly of high-income countries, several low- and middle-income countries have seen a reversal in gender gaps, with boys now lagging behind girls in enrollment, completion, and learning outcomes. Around the world, girls are more likely than boys to get no education at all. This is mostly due to access to education in poorer countries. Girls are less likely to have access, but once they're in the classroom, boys usually do worse. The difference is widest in reading. In almost all countries that collect sufficient data, girls are better readers than boys at 10 years old. Boys also lag in international science tests and have mostly given up long-standing advantages in maths. Globally, colleges and universities now just enroll 88 men for every 100 women. These trends have long been starkest in rich countries, but increasingly visible in poorer ones too. You see the data from the World Bank here, where girls almost unilaterally outperform boys in the classroom. In 1972, when the US government passed laws to promote gender equality in education, there was a 12% point gap in the proportion of bachelor degrees going to men compared to women. By 1982, the gap had closed. However, Nobody predicted that by 2019, the gender gap in bachelor degrees awarded would be wider by 14 points in the opposite direction. Girls have, generally speaking, better adjusted to the academic environment than boys, which is often why they do better in exams. Even so, girls remain considerably underrepresented in most STEM subjects, except chemistry and biology. The growing gender gap against men in higher education, both enrollment and graduation, has been a topic of conversation and debate in recent months. In the chart on the left, you can see that among the ages of 25 and older, women today are more likely than men to have a four-year college degree. The gap in college completion is even wider among younger adults between 25 and 34, which is the chart on the right. Men also have lower life satisfaction. According to lots of research, including StatsCan, men experienced lower life satisfaction than women. Overall, men reported a score of 93.3 and women 93.4. That doesn't sound like a big difference, but it could be the difference between an extra two to $4,000 in income per year versus not getting it. Men appear more likely to commit suicide. The suicide rates by sex isn't even close. In the graph below, men are almost four times more likely to commit suicide than women. Women are more likely to attempt suicide, but men are more likely to die from it. According to Simon Hatcher, Vice Chair of Research for the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Ottawa, higher suicide rates mainly come down to two things. One is that men use more lethal means to attempt suicide, and the second is that they don't seek care as much as women. Men are more likely to use firearms and other deadly methods, while women are more likely to use pills. These differences might be because men are more comfortable with guns, or it might be that, in some research suggests, they're choosing more extreme methods because they're more suicidal in the first place. Men are more likely to be imprisoned. According to the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons, 93% of federal prisoners are men. So that's hilarious, since 50% of the U.S. population is men. Men are also more likely to have more severe sentences than women for the same crime. That doesn't seem like equality to me. These are stats for federal prison only. Federal prisons only hold 9% of the overall people incarcerated in the United States. Other institutions holding inmates are state prisons and local jails. However, less recent figures released by the Bureau of Justice Statistics in 2015 show that this ratio was similar to the overall U.S. prison stats. 
Okay, so let's circle back to that new basic index of gender inequality, which seems to be a more fair way of evaluating equality. It focuses on three factors, educational opportunities, healthy life expectancy, and overall life satisfaction. In the chart below, on the left is basic educational opportunity, on the center is life satisfaction, and on the right is healthy lifespan. A few things stand out in this chart. First, educational opportunities show far more variation than either of the other two measures, particularly in the less developed countries towards the bottom of the chart, where women are more disadvantaged, which we spoke about earlier. Second, men fall behind on women in the healthy lifespan metric in almost every country. These two patterns explain much of the overall results in the index. Countries with overwhelming educational disadvantages for women tend to have a total BIGI score showing women falling behind men overall. These two patterns tend to explain the overall results in the index. Countries with overwhelming educational disadvantages for women tend to have a total BIGI score showing women falling behind men overall. Meanwhile, countries with smaller educational disadvantages or even small educational advantages for women, combined with the overall tendency for women to have longer, healthier lives, to result in an index score indicating that men might be the ones who truly suffer from inequality. Think about that.